Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about return and how that works. Let's go! Don't forget this channel has a dedicated Discord server. It's a place where you can talk about the episodes and tutorials of this channel. Maybe you wonder something about the last episode that was a bit unclear. Or maybe you just wanna say hello. And for those who wish to go the extra mile to support the channel, there's a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page and also there's a membership option here on YouTube. Thank you! Using returns in Java is very straightforward. You put returns in a method and that method then returns a value. And I have an example right here. And here I have a constructor for this class, first lesson. And I make this first lesson as an object in the main method that we have. And we covered how this works in a previous episode. So I'm gonna leave it at that, but I just wanted to show how it was created. And in this constructor, we first print out, hello, this is a constructor, to know that we are inside this uh, code bracket. Then we have a integer named a equals method1. So method1 is a method that simply returns 5. That's it. That's all it does. Let's run this. And let's take this up. Hello, this is the constructor a5. So we print out the value 5. All right, that's pretty cool. So how do we know that this method can return an integer? If I try to set a equals method2, I get an error. Because the method2 is not a method that returns an integer. And the way we can see this is by checking the keyword before the name. And here we have int indicating that this is a return type of integer, or rather this method returns an integer. If it has void, that means it doesn't return any value. So if it's an integer, it must return an integer. So I will go up here and just set method1. We can of course use this method as a variable. So let's say we have an if statement. We want to do something. We want to see if 5, or rather 10, is more than method1. But no, no semicolon in a if statement like that. This works too. It's just like any other variable, but we're calling a method. This method returns a value, and then we check that value for this statement. So this works too. You can use it pretty much the same as a variable. And if we wanted a other variable, int b equals 10, then we can say 10 plus method 1 as well. So this works just as well. And in this example, we have integer as a return, but we can have any type of returns, such as double, string, and what have you. But I'm using integer as an example right now, and the return must always be what the method is declared as. But what if you have a method with if statements inside, or switches, etc., and it takes a different path depending on different type of variables before returning? Let's say I have a if statement here, and we should state, and we need a boolean first. Boolean state equals true, for example. Then we have a return of 5. But if state is false, there is no return statement here. So we let's add a else. There is no return statement in here, and that's why we get an error. We need a return statement. Because if state is true, then we return 5, but if it isn't true, then just we get stuck. There's no return here. So if your code takes a different path, it always needs to have a return. So maybe here we can return, let's say, 10. And if you're on this now, first let's set state to false, so we don't get 5, we should get 10. Let's see what happens. We get 10 because state is false. So a method can have more than one return as long as you only call one return. If we had a return down here, return 15, this would never be called because if state is true, then we do this. Otherwise we do that. So this becomes unreachable. So we can't have that. But if we didn't have a else here, we only return five if state is true. If state isn't true, then we continue down the code and we reach this statement. So a method can have more than one return, but the code can only execute one return. 
and it always needs to be in the end. So if we had return 5 here, if stay was true, and then we have a suso, this would also become unreachable, because as soon as we return 5, we leave the method. There's nothing more here for us to do. The last code needs to be a return. We can have more returns, but only one return can be called. But a normal method can also have a return, but it can never return a value or an object or anything. It can only use return to leave the method. So in this method, let's go for int i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And we add a sysso here, value, then plus i. So we see the value. But if i is equal to 5, we add a return. Just like that, return with nothing. What is going to happen? Well, as soon as we execute this loop, and the loop gets to where i is equal to 5, we're going to leave this method. So we will not see the value 6, 7, 8, 9. So let's call method 3 and see what happens. And I'm just going to erase this one. Hello, this is the constructor, a15, and I think that's because state was false, so we return 15. Yeah, that makes sense. And in this method, we have a loop, and as soon as we get to i equals 5, we return and leave it so we don't see the rest of the loop. So we exit not only the method, but the loop as well, because the loop is inside, well, the method. So why would someone use return in a method that doesn't return anything. So for example, if a statement is false, then you can just say return. That means that you don't have what you need for the rest of the code. You might not have enough of something, or it might be too low, or whatever. You add a check if this requirement isn't met, leave this method. And then you can call it again. Maybe this time you had the requirements, and so on. So you can add a return in a method when there's no point in continuing down the code execution in that method. So yeah, that was the return statement in a nutshell. A return can be used for returning a value, like we have in our method 1. We need to declare what type of value or object or whatever it needs to return in the method creation itself. And a method that is declared int cannot return a float, a string, and so on. So if it's declared int, that's all it can return. So integer can only return integer, floats can only return floats, and so on. A method can have more than one return as long as each path only leads to one return. And a normal method can also have a return, but it can never return any value. It can only stop the execution of code in that method. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you learned something. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care now. Bye.